Definition and value. The city is a marketable product. The overall objective of city marketing, or urban marketing, is first of all to create an overall concept and a vision for a city to reach a USP, a unique selling point, and so to ensure the attractiveness of the city to satisfy its target groups, to attract potential customers and therefore to stay competitive. Competition has always existed between cities and places for customers, investors and population. In order to face competition, urban management must be done with much more competitiveness and entrepreneurial sense. It must be strategic and market-oriented and able to respond to the trend of increasing competition and interdependence between the cities that derives from the globalized economy and the implied increase in the scale of economic relationships between cities. Nevertheless, most cities do not use a reference framework to implement their strategy, nor do they develop an overall concept. This is, this is caused by the variety of de definitions and interpretations of the term city marketing. In its classical interpretation, marketing is interpreted mainly as a selling and distribution function, limited to the enterprises and to businesses. The main focus was on transactions and exchanges. Over the years, its functions were enhanced. The orientation shifted from transactions to relationships. The concept of marketing was reinterpreted as it became a widely used leadership tool and was implemented into strategic management. Professors Philip Kotler and Sidney J. Levy explained the broadening of the marketing concept as follows. Marketing is a pervasive societal activity that goes considerably beyond the selling of toothpaste, soap and steel. And they interpreted the concept of marketing also for non-business organizations. As a result, marketing is therefore defined as a process consisting of the planning and executing of the conception, pricing, promotion and distribution of ideas, goods and services. It should create an exchange which satisfies individual and organizational objectives. We can get an overview of urban marketing by examining its origin and the reasons for an implementation of the city marketing strategy. In the late 1980s, a growing discussion developed on the possibility to transfer the managerial concept of marketing to a city, and so making a first attempt to make public utility areas more efficient. But before an urban perspective for marketing could be established, there had to be a change in how to define the concepts of marketing. According to Cutler and Levy, there was a decisive similarity between economical and non-economical exchange-based relationships. Already the newly introduced non-profit marketing was a result of a broadening of the marketing definition and this proved to be the reason for establishing the new scientific dis discipline of urban marketing. Moreover, in the years there was a growing demand for marketing concepts in the public sector as competition among cities accentuated and old concepts of public administration lost their importance. By creating a new research and marketing discipline, the differences to business marketing went into the focus of scientists and authors. Business marketing deals with a company's goals and the needs of its customers. The city marketing or urban marketing approach deals with a deliberate service orientation in public administration. City marketing involves a lot of players because it is not implemented into hierarchical decision-making processes like it is in, in a company. Furthermore, it is a continuous process of coordination and cooperation between public administrations, citizens and businesses. Because of the unique features of a city, it is not possible to transfer a city marketing concept from one city to another like it would be feasible in business marketing, where it is possible to transfer an advertising concept from one product category to another product category. There are three main reasons for the non-transferability and convertibility of a concept in city marketing. The first being cities and all its features are unique, for example, cityscape, location, streets, buildings and facilities, weather, and so on. The second, urban life is a dynamic and complex organism, and the third, there is principally no single target group to be addressed by the marketing concept. The strategy is created for a broader audience.
There are three main factors which help define urban or city marketing. One, city marketing is a selling and advertising strategy. City marketing is seen as function to advertise a city and to create an image for the city. Two, city marketing as a process. It is seen as an exchange process between players in a city or method to achieve objectives in a community by taking all interests into consideration. Three, city marketing as a philosophy as a guide or as a blueprint for the urban territory. All in all, we can state that city marketing contains all activities to raise the attractiveness of a community for different target groups. To fulfill the requirements of city marketing, these activities have to be based on a strategic competitive concept, which takes the local features into consideration to position the city in the competition between communities. A further basic part of city marketing is the concept of integration, the instruments of marketing are used to define an integrated approach for a city. Integration means creating a concept for the entire urban center. All measures should be set in context for the whole city area and its characteristics and features. City marketing shall not be confused with urban development, urban planning or other measures of local authorities. Urban development and urban planning are tools of the public administration and local authorities dealing with features of the city in a more architectonical and technical sense. It deals with social, technical and physical development of municipalities. Of course, there are some overlaps between urban marketing and urban development. Those interfaces can be municipal planning which deals with planning the features of a shopping mile or planning of single objects like fountains in public places. In both cases, city marketing concentrates more on the subjective opinions of target groups and not on the spatial planning. In comparison to urban development and urban planning, or alliances for promotion of trade and industry, it goes one step further because private players are involved in the decision-making process and the realization of measures. Sometimes city marketing, or urban marketing, is seen as the answer to failed urban development attempts. Consequently, city marketing is regarded as an innovation in the urban planning segment. Before it was established, urban development authorities were responsible for the constitution of a city. There was no theoretical framework or scientific discussion about urban development which just dealt with the layout of an urban area. With the implementation of city marketing in the 80s, the cities introduced a communication orientation which eventually led to the leadership orientation of the 90s. The coordination between the public and the private sector is crucial in the definition of a successful urban marketing strategy, and it shall constitute an institutionalized cooperation between them. Urban marketing is a strategy aiming at promoting urban spaces which can gain the interest of particular stakeholders. The strategy foresees the reuse of urban facilities through a requalification and this process should be observed and witnessed by the participation of public institutions through a participative governance aimed at rethinking the territory and by doing so producing new culture and tackling urban decay. Urban promotion and requalification lead the path to giving a new meaning to the territory and to the new functions it has to serve. This process needs a system of integrated public and private institutions aimed at promoting the cultural and social development of the district, as well as aimed at the reconversion of urban public spaces. The objectives of public and private authorities' collaboration within urban promotion are mainly creating a real promotional industry, strengthening the ties between urban promotion and other territorial sectors, integrating the processes of development of territorial resources, favoring integrated programs between public and private entities, as well as engaging the territory's key actors like local authorities, congregations and communities, who shall play a key role in territorial management and decisions. The collaboration of private and public bodies makes up a complex urban strategy for a common objective involving resources, actors and infrastructures. Private and public actors could set up a collaboration on different fields, such as, for example, culture or environment, 
Just to give an example and proceed with the identification of areas within the city boundaries which offer cultural and environmental resources, or the integration of different sectors such as public transportation, culture, manufacturing and craftsmanship, in order to develop them and bring innovative infrastructures and new life to the area. The urban marketing process should be evaluated within the framework of urban management and planning. A strategic process concerns the analysis of the city's internal and external environment in everything that has to do with the examination of the relationships that have been developed inside the city. These can concern a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, as well as a PEST analysis, political, economic, social and technological factors. Through the SWOT analysis arises two levels of research. These concern the relationships between public authorities and the ability of the public sector to implement development strategies in cooperation with the private sector within a city. The main objective of the SWOT analysis is the research and evaluation of the local distinctive characteristics of a city or an urban space. This process is the basis for examining the following factors of strategic planning. 1. Defining the vision for the city. 2. Defining the objectives of development. 3. Market research and segmentation in order to evaluate possible target markets and investigate global. 4. Plan the appropriate strategies, tactics and alternative scenarios for, per action. And 5. Plan the feedback procedure, development of a model of efficient communication. Strategic planning is a very important step as local authorities on one hand and the private sector on the other develop cooperations based on the representation of common interests and policies, as we mentioned in a previous paragraph, in order to develop the objectives and the motives for a, a further urban development. The most important factor is that the vision for the city, the development of goals and strategies, and the strategic marketing plan must be based on local distinctive characteristics in order to be successful. Marketing planning in urban contexts is also really important for tourism and everything related to it, like food, culture, heritage, music, environment and sports. The importance of marketing in tourism planning rises as tourism destinations are seen as products. The existing resources of the urban area are becoming an, a unified package for selling the city. An essential part of tourism planning is the evaluation of the attraction towards the tourists and the decision of measures to empower it. Tourism planning, according to marketing planning principles, is a complex process that includes marketing research, segmentation of the tourism market, tourism product policy, pricing of the touristic products, communication and sales procedures, the distribution system definition, advertising through informative leaflets, sales promotion of travels and tourism to the city, direct marketing, public relations and marketing process control. Finally, each city can be sold in many different ways to different kinds of tourists, and it must be kept in mind that as the city evolves, so do also the marketing planning processes. The so-called Porto Antico of Genoa is a large square overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. It is over a thousand years old, but after decades of negligence and disuse, it has come to new life more than 20 years ago. Here tourism, culture, shopping, entertainment, sports, dining and taste, and boating are alive again, making the old port the heart of the new Genoa. A city inside the city, where citizens, visitors and tourists can have fun work and meet people by strolling along the quays, entering one of the many museums or enjoying the many cafes and restaurants by the waterfront. Urban spirit and tourist vocation are triggering energies of Genoa's Porto Antico that keep the structures, activities, pyres and docks alive 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. This is the charm, the alchemy that turns an urban space into a place of the soul to discover.
Genoa's port area was really different from what we currently experienced before the year 1992. In the aftermath of World War II, maritime shipping and trade increased dramatically over time, and the Genoa's port facilities slowly became outdated and inadequate for the growing traffic. So, ships and merchant vessels started to dock in the western wing of the port, leaving the old port to abandonment and neglect. The old port's facilities were doomed to decay. Until the mid-1980s, this area was a dangerous slum, where theft, murder and prostitution were ordinary life. Eventually, in 1992, on the 500th anniversary of the discovery of America by Genoa's Admiral of the Seas, Christopher Columbus, the city was appointed the organization of an international exposition on the, on the theme Columbus, the Ships and the Sea. On this event, the administration decided to give the city a new face by starting renovations right on its old port area. The famous Italian architect Renzo Piano was entrusted in 1984 of converting and reorganizing the whole city and he thought that the best solution was to foremost recover the main center of ancient Genoa the area which provided a link between the sea and the old port. The idea was to create structures and facilities that were to last over time after the Expo 1992. With a great vision in mind, the old port was about to come to life again as the main cultural and leisure center in the city of Genoa. Today, the Porto Antico, besides cafes and restaurants, offers various attractions as the world-famous aquarium, the Congress Center, the Bigo, the Biosphere, also known as the Bubble, playgrounds and a lively waterfront beneath the shade of tall palm trees, as well as a square hosting many gigs and events all year round, and much more. Here below you can see a map outlining all new structures within the Old Port area. The Edificio Millo used to be one of the main warehouses along the docks and now, after incurring into terrific restoration of its indoor and external structure, it hosts cafes, restaurants, various shops, the National Museum of the Antarctica and a panoramic terrace overlooking the waterfront. The cotton warehouse, as the name suggests, used to be the place for the storage of different goods. It was built at the beginning of the 20th century with a length of 391 meters a width of 30 meters and a height of 20 meters. It nowadays hosts the Congress Center, a cinema, bars and other recreational mm. facilities. The aquarium has become the city's landmark. It has been built on the Fumo Spinola Bridge area with a total length of 200 meters and is composed of two off-ground compartments linked together by a central spine hosting the different visiting sections and the services. Below the main structure, which is sustained by concrete columns, the key has been recovered and now hosts public venues and different services. The 61 pools containing over 600 marine species, like fishes, sea animals, shellfishes, sea plants and reptiles, can be seen both from above mm. and from below water level so as to create experience of an underwater passage. The aquarium was enlarged in 2013 with a larger pool for dolphins. The biosphere, also called the bubble, is a glass and steel sphere-shaped structure placed on the floating platform next to the aquarium. It has a volume of 4,000 square meters and offers a visiting surface of 200 me square meters. The biosphere contains a small tropical rainforest giving shelter to over 150 species of animals. The Beagle is a steel tree-shaped structure designed by Renzo Piano which reproduces a large-scale crane, similar to those on crane vessels. It's a design experiment and has since become the archetypal symbol of Genoa's old port. The unique structure offers stunning views over Genoa in a panoramic lift which boasts a rotating sea through cabin. Its structural core lies underwater in the dockyard, with two groups of arms emerging and spreading out above water. These arms are its key feature and the different lengths create a design that is not only eye-catching but serves a crucial purpose. The longest, at 70 meters, supports the cable of the panoramic lift, the others support roof of the Piazza delle Feste. All of the arms are anchored to the foundations of the structure below sea level.
Other important spots within the Genoa's Port Antico are, for instance, Piazza de Mandraccio, which is a large square overlooking the waterfront, flanked by towering palm trees, and constitutes the backdrop of festivals and gigs, both in the summer and in winter time. A bit further, the Darsena area encompasses the Sea Museum Galata, the Faculty of Economics, the submarine Nazaru Sauro, as well as the ship replica of a 17th century Spanish galleon called the Neptune. The transformation of the Port Antico from a rotting port area into the urban heart of the city has led to the shift of Genoa's long-time center from its historic nucleus to today's area of Port Antico, which of course had positive outcomes for the whole city, thus re-establishing that old relationship between the city and the Mediterranean Sea. This area has become the symbol of Genoa and so a truly remarkable product to promote the city and encourage tourism and business relocation. During the 1970s, the administration of the city of Madrid decided to build up the western wing of the M30 highway along the Manzanares River. It was supposed to be the first and most important part of the ring road that served the aim of bypassing the central part of the city and therefore to relieve it from heavy traffic jams. This brought up a sharp separation of the city with its river, which for many years remained cast away between the two roadway lanes. The highway represented an impenetrable barrier which produced extremely high levels of pollution close to residential areas and separated the two historical parks of Campo del Moro and Casa de Campo. Between 2003 and 2007, the administration eventually carried out the ambitious plan to move the old M30's southwest wing underground. And by doing so, they created over 10 kilometers of pedestrian and cycling routes, as well as parks and playgrounds. And the removal of traffic jams and pollution on the surface was indeed another great achievement. Today, Madrilenians and visitors can enjoy a large green area adjacent to the city center, offering unique recreational facilities along the river banks, such as skate parks, basketball courts, and BMX tracks. The five pillars of the conversion of Madrid Rio area are 1. The recuperation of the river 2. The Salón de Pinos, a pine hole featuring 8,000 pine trees 3. The expansion and creation of green and blue areas 4. The creation of courts, tracks and circuits for sports and leisure and 5. The urban development of the area the scale is so enormous that it is difficult to think of another city that has implemented such an urban regeneration operation which has totally transformed the life quality of local residents and became a first-class tourism attraction. The Argenzuela Park can be regarded as the main attraction within the Madrid Rio area as it includes a beach along the river comprising three oval-shaped waterside enclosures. One has a shallow pool of water where people can cool off. Another features jets of water rising to different heights and with different effects. And the third has a pool with clouds of spray. Around the three water zones, there are lawns with chairs and loungers for people to sunbathe and comfortably enjoy the atmosphere. The 250 meters steel footbridge connecting the two riverbanks was designed by French architect Dominique Perrault as two conical shapes spiraling around and supported by two pillars, thus giving the impression of floating mid-air, and represents a prominent landmark of the Rio Park as well as one of the most favored urban destinations of Madrid. Madrid Rio occupies 120 hectares of green areas and six of public facilities, like sports areas, comprising basket courts, BMX tracks, skate parks, and so on, then art centers, urban beaches, playgrounds, kiosks, and cafes. 410 million euros have, have been spent, but with this project, Madrid belongs again to the geography of the river and has largely increased the livelihood of the surrounding neighborhoods and has increased its touristic attraction and appeal of the area, contributing to the increase of stores and local businesses.
Urban marketing strategies also foresee a number of actions to improve the city's visibility and amelioration in terms of services, both for citizens and tourists, and therefore in terms of quality of life. Cooperation agreements are one of the main actions undertaken towards this path. It could be cooperation among cities or in networks of urban centers. For example, the city of Vienna and its twin city agreement with Bratislava in the fields of transport infrastructure, economic cooperation, regional planning and flood protection, or the city of Trieste's agreement on enhanced cooperation in the fields of smart city strategies, urban development, historic and urban conservation, heritage and cooperation between the two harbors. Territorial agreements on tourist services also play a key role in the urban marketing strategy, as they provide a perfect cooperation among private and public national and transnational bodies in granting services to actual and prospective tourists. For instance, the city-owned Helsinki Travel Marketing LTD works in cooperation with the Helsinki City Executive Office's Economic Development Division to promote the general recognition of Helsinki as one of the most exciting cities and to develop appeal and impact on the city among residents, visitors, professionals and enterprises. The units promote an open, benevolent and business-friendly Helsinki, especially by means of marketing, events and communications and furthermore that cover activities such as conventions, events and economic marketing, tourist information, event production and partnerships with other companies or actors in the same field. Another important activity for the urban marketing of a city is its image as an environmentally friendly place or a green city where the administration is keen on making its citizens and visitors breathe fresh and clean air and where the services offered come from sustainable sources. On this basis and on the basis of the EU climate and energy objectives of members' territories, an agreement has been developed called the Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy to endorse and support the efforts deployed by local authorities in the implementation of sustainable energy policies, which in 2015 was heralded by Commissioner Miguel Arias Cañetas, the world's biggest urban climate and energy initiative. This new covenant is built upon three main pillars of mitigation, adaptation and providing secure, sustainable and affordable energy. The signatories endorse a shared vision of 2050 accelerating the decarburization of their territories and the reduction of greenhouse gases, strengthening their capacity to adapt to unavoidable climate change impacts, and allowing their citizens to access secure, sustainable and affordable energy. This bold political commitment marks the beginning of a long-term process with, with, with cities committed to reporting every two years on the implementation progress of their plans. The Covenant, besides marking an exceptional initiative, also represents a plus in terms of the image of commitment on sustainability and on green policies a city undertakes, and therefore both citizens and tourists can benefit from such agreements.